It's like the James Bond of fragrance oils. Mysterious, seductive, and smooth. It's like playing a game of hide and seek with your nose. I just keep picking up something different every time. When it comes to choosing a year-round fragrance, you don't want something that smells like a locker room after a hockey game. What you need is a versatile fragrance that can work for any season or occasion. It should have a balanced mix of notes that don't make you feel like you're sitting in the middle of a perfume factory. And hey, you don't want a fragrance that fizzles out faster than Hollywood marriage, right? So make sure you choose something that has staying power. But then of course comes seasonality. You don't want to choose a tropical fragrance in the middle of a blizzard. That's just weird. And finally, let's not forget about the ambiance. You want a fragrance that is cozy and inviting all year long. So what makes a fragrance a year-round fragrance? What makes it different than all the others? What makes you think to yourself, yeah, I could sniff this every day. Today I'm going to break down what makes a good year-round scent based on a few factors. Versatility, balanced notes, and overall ambience. And what better way to do this than with some real life examples. So today we're going to be evaluating and rating seven new fragrances from Candle Science and how well they fit into the year-round fragrance category. And this video isn't like some of the others where we're going to make some full testers and, and really show that whole testing process. It's more about evaluating and rating these based off of year-round effectiveness, at least in my opinion. And I'll explain a little bit more how I'm doing this as we go. The first one we're going to start off with is Freesia and Lilac. All right, interesting. Uh, this is a little bit different than most of the other lilacs I've smelled before. I like lilac, although it's usually sort of on the weaker side. What I like about this one is that you can definitely pick up some of the extra sweetness. There's a little bit of fruitiness in it as well. In fact, if we take a look quickly at the note profiles that Candle Science provides, it includes tangerine, peach, freesia, lilac, jasmine, powder, vetiver, sandalwood, and light musk. Now, what I pick up first and foremost is, of course, some of the floral, some of that lilac. But as opposed to many other floral scents, or at least lilac fragrances, this one I do pick up some of that peach, tangerine, like I said before, some of that sweet fruitiness, which makes this stand out a little bit different than some of the others. Okay, so the purpose of today's video is how do we rate this on whether or not it's a good year-round fragrance. So if you're looking for someone who's trying to introduce some popular fragrances all year long, what should you be looking for? Well, like I said, we're gonna talk about versatility, balanced notes, and then overall ambience. We're gonna start with versatility. And listen, if I'm looking for a fragrance that's only gonna work in the dead of winter or to cover and mask the smell of cat pee, then I should probably rethink my life choices. When it comes to year-round fragrances, I'm looking for a fragrance that can do it all. Essentially a superhero with a sense of smell. You want a scent that can work for any occasion, whether that's Netflix and chill or hosting your in-laws. Either way, you don't want a one-hit wonder. A fragrance that only works for one season or one occasion. Go for that Swiss Army knife of fragrance oils, one that's got some versatility. So would I say that Freesia and Lilac fits in that category? Yes, I would give this a checkbox on versatility in terms of your round fragrance. Its ability to adapt to different seasons. Why? Because it has some sweetness as well as your florals with a little bit of an aromatic, earthy, and woody notes underneath as well. So I would say that this is a versatile fragrance. Check. In terms of balanced notes, I would say this does a good job as well. There's not one single scent that is overpowering all the others. Yes, of course you detect that floral, the lilac, and a little bit of the peach more than anything else. But again, that's the purpose of the fragrance. What you don't want is one note that is so pungent that it masks everything else. And I'm not getting that with this. So I think this also does a good job with balanced notes. Now there is another factor you should consider when you're rating the effectiveness on a fragrance being a year round scent or not. And that is longevity. And it's the only one that we won't discuss in detail per fragrance because it depends on so many factors that's going to vary from each maker, from each person. And that is the type of materials you're using, uh, wicks, fragrance load, wax, the, the size of your vessel. If you're not making candles and using these fragrances for anything else, then there's still a lot of factors that can determine the longevity of the fragrance, how long that fragrance will linger around. Basically, you don't want something that's here today and gone tomorrow, like a fleeting summer romance. No, no. You need something that's in it for the long haul. Less like a sprinter and more like a marathon runner with a sense of smell. Because what's the point of a fragrance if it's gonna fizzle out faster than a New Year's resolution? You want a fragrance that won't go away, that has staying power, like spilled candle dye on your kitchen counter. So choose a fragrance that can go the distance all day, all night, all year. Okay, next up is Lavender Embers. All right. <coughs> That's gotta go in the closet or something. I should have definitely did this first. I gotta close this sucker back up. Holy cow, it's taking over the entire room. Lavender Embers, interesting. Okay, um, definitely interesting, definitely unique, definitely strong. Whew, I'm gonna have to air out the entire building. That is for sure. <coughs> well, let me collect myself real quick here and then we'll try to discuss this fragrance a little bit more. Okay, I gotta get this away while I do this. One sec. All right, the top notes of this one include eucalyptus and peppermint, lavender, sage, smoke, patchouli, and cedar. 
Well, none of those notes normally lead to that strong of a fragrance. So I don't know if it's the um, particular notes that have more than others or if it's the combination of some of these together. I don't know. Uh, definitely a lot of smoke and, and some peppermint and eucalyptus, that, that's for sure. But wow, that is potent. But again, the purpose of this video is to talk about whether it is a year-round fragrance. So let's go back to our framework here and start with versatility. Well, this fragrance is definitely somewhat unique and interesting which inherently is gonna bring its own versatility. To me, it really falls into that kind of late summer, early fall category. But again, that's my own personal opinion. To me, it reminds me a lot of like gathering around a bonfire, but one that's got a bunch of lavender petals in it. So I don't know that I would give this one a, a high rating for versatility, but uh, it could be used as a mixer. And if that's the case, then really the sky's the limit. So let's talk about balance, balance notes. Now, I don't know about you, but when it comes to candle fragrances, I don't want something that smells like my grandma's potpourri collection caught on fire. You're looking for something that has the right mix of notes. Now, I will say that you also want a mix of notes that do seem real, not one that you're in the middle of an artificial flower shop. And I gotta give this one some credit it doesn't smell artificial at all. But in my opinion, you also don't want something that's overpowering and punchy. It feels like you got knocked out by a heavyweight champ. You want something that's just right, like Goldilocks's porridge. Not too hot, not too cold, not too strong, not too weak. So while I do sort of enjoy this fragrance and the lingering smell through the entire building is starting to grow on me, I don't know that I would give this one a check mark for overall balance notes because it definitely is more prominent on the smoky side. You can certainly pick up the lavender fragrance and some of those other notes like the eucalyptus and peppermint as well. And actually all together, they create kind of an interesting complex fragrance. However, it is still definitely prominent on the woody and smoky fragrance. And again, not that that's bad, but it's certainly leading the charge. And while I haven't burned this one yet, an actual candle, I have heard from many others that as you burn it, the notes do come together in a little bit more of a balanced way. I'm not sure how much. And while that's probably true, when I'm choosing fragrances that are meant for year round, you're trying to appeal to everyone, not one that's so polarizing. And a scent like this can tend to be very polarizing. You either love it or you hate it, which is not really ideal when you're trying to establish a fragrance that's meant for everybody all year long. As far as the overall ambiance, I would say that this certainly sets a mood. I'm not sure what mood that is yet, but it definitely sets one. And depending on the time of year, the space, and the situation, it could create a very interesting and unique aromatic experience. But for an everyday scent, it's hard for me to imagine that I would want to burn this one 365 days a year. Next up is Limoncello and Cream. I'm going to like this one. Oh, this is a nice refreshing one up that last very, very potent one. Yes, so I'm partial to fragrances like this. This is a really good lemon scent. Maybe one of my favorites that I've smelled in quite a while. Now, just taking a look at the notes here, this one has top notes of lemon, sugar, bergamot, orange, and mint, middle notes of cake and batter, or I'm sorry, butter, and base notes of tonka bean and honey. And yeah, this one smells fantastic. So in regards to versatility, little fruity, little sweet, little zesty. You can do a lot with that. That's a very versatile note profile. You can use that in multiple seasons. You can use them as blenders. So a fragrance like this is almost always a pretty versatile, good year-round choice. Assuming, of course, that you like lemon. If not, what is wrong with you? No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. So now let's talk about the balance, the balanced notes in this fragrance. Imagine a clown bouncing around on a pogo stick. Entertaining, but just bouncing just all over the place. And then consider a yoga instructor doing a pose on top of a large rock. One of these two just seems more like they know what they're doing. One is balanced and calm, and the other is entertaining for sure, but also just causes anxiety. I want my fragrances to be interesting, of course, like a clown on a pogo stick, but I also want them to be soothing, calm, satisfying. A candle that you would light over and over and over. Not one that's like a movie where you watched it once and yeah, you enjoyed it, but you'd never watch it again. Overall ambiance. Well, with any lemon fragrance, especially one that is softened or altered a little bit with a floral or some vanilla or some kind of fruit fragrance is like a loyal best friend. Always there when you need them and they're welcome anytime. And by the way, I think I touched a little bit of the fragrance on the end of my nose, which is not ideal. All right, next up is matcha and bergamot. I can say that this is a fragrance combination I have never really thought about. Also not what I expected. Let me get a little bit of this here. Matcha and bergamot. It's like the uh, Batman and Robin of fragrances, just less spandex and more sophistication. Honestly, the versatility of a fragrance like this is pretty unmatched. It's like a zen-like calmness that you need after a long day of saving the world or a kickstart in the morning to tackle the day. As far as balance goes, let's take a quick look at the notes that are in this fragrance. Bergamot, lemon, orange, green tea, black tea, sea salt, sandalwood, and cream. Well, there's certainly a few in here that I do not detect myself, and that is the cream, the sea salt. However, I would say that overall, the bergamot and matcha 
is what stands out to me. And that is, of course, the goal of this fragrance. So I wouldn't say it disappoints whatsoever in terms of its actual goal. Uh, as far as balance goes, I detect the matcha more, I think, than anything else, but it's not so overpowering where you don't smell any bergamot and you don't get any of these other woodsy notes as well. So I do think it's a pretty good balanced fragrance. And of course, certain scents like this, you do want something to stand out a little bit because that's the purpose of that fragrance. But there's nothing so overpowering where it might as well have been a one note fragrance. As far as the overall ambiance, that one for sure could be used all year long. I would definitely say that meets the uh, the goal of a year-round scent. There are many seasons and certainly many occasions and situations where it would make sense to have a fragrance like this going. So I do think this would be a fan favorite and a popular one. And I do think it ticks all those check boxes. It's something, if you were to describe what's a good year-round favorite, I would say that that would certainly fall in that category. And one way to think about that is, can you think of a season where this one would only make sense for? And if not, that's usually a good indication that it's a good year-round scent. On the flip side, when you find fragrances that you're like, well, this smells like a winter scent to me, then that's probably not a great candidate for something to burn all year long, at least for most people. Of course, there are certain scents that some people love that they'll just burn all the time. And I've got some of those myself. All right, next up, we have Peach Mango Bellini. Oh, very nice. I'm a sucker for a good peach kind of mango fragrance. All right, so the notes of this one include tangerine and peach, mango, carnation, passion fruit, sandalwood, and pedigree. For me, I'm definitely picking up the tangerine peach mango the most. Listen, this is a fantastic fragrance. I'm not sure I would consider it a year-round scent. To me, it's very tropical and very summery, but nonetheless, it's a great fragrance. It's very summery, fruity, tropical, like, like sipping a drink on a beachside bar. Now, whether you want to smell that all year long is a personal preference, but for me, it's a lot like wearing flip-flops in the winter. I'll occasionally do it if the situation calls for it, but for the most part, that's just an exception because this fragrance screams summer to me. But again, that's just my opinion. However, one way you could easily transform this fragrance into a year-round scent is to blend it with something like a vanilla or a cinnamon. That will give it a little bit of a fall or winter twist and probably just make this fragrance like a whole new fragrance. And that's the great thing about some of these scents is they are great mixers, great blenders with other oils. So if you love this one out of the bottle as it is for summer, perfect. But if you want to continue to use it into fall and winter, just try to mix it with something else and see what you come up with. So overall, I really love this fragrance. I would use it in a heartbeat. But for me, it would not be part of my year-round scents. It would be more part of my summer collection. Next up, Rose and Oud. This one to me sounded like the most interesting one of the bunch. Hmm. It's sort of similar to the Lavender Embers one, so I'm trying to decide which one. They're both kind of smoky. I'm trying to decide which one I like the best. Yeah, probably Rose and Oud. All right, this one has Oud, Peppercorn, Blackberry. Interesting. Rose, carnation, myrrh, dark musk, and amber. It's like the James Bond of fragrance oils. Mysterious, seductive, and smooth. Okay, so it definitely has a combination of some soft rose and deep woody oud that does create a pretty mysterious, soothing. It's very sensual and intriguing. It's like playing a game of hide and seek with your nose. I just keep picking up something different every time, like revealing the layers. Oh, I can almost hear it talking to me like, hey, come closer, you know you want to. I do, I do want to. This is really interesting. It's really growing on me. I'm really starting to enjoy this one. Okay, so let's talk about the versatility of a fragrance like this. Well, while it is definitely a smoky scent, I would say it's versatile in the sense that, in the sense, in the fact that it can blend well with others. And I also think that for the right customer, it could be a great summer, fall, and winter fragrance. Now, some people are not gonna like this. This is somewhat polarizing, a lot like lavender and embers, but I wouldn't say to near the degree that that one would be. As far as the balance of the notes go, it's not getting 100% balance on this one because certainly it is much heavier on the smokiness, at least compared to the rose and, well, really any other note. The rose and those other fragrance notes are there, but they are light. However, they are still very pleasant. I can also say that I have experienced this one burning in a candle. So I do know that as it's burning, it does smell even more balanced than it does out of the bottle, which is often the case with most fragrances. However, even then it is still heavy on the smoke side, but those other notes are definitely detectable. And I am not a huge fan of rose most of the time, just by itself, but I, so I prefer it to be blended with something else. And I think this is a great combination. I'm not entirely sure I'm, I'm isolating the blackberry fragrance, which I think would be interesting, but there are other elements there besides the rose and the oud. And I think that's what's helping. It's kind of bringing everything together. And the more that that fragrance is lingering around me, the more I'm really, really enjoying that one. This might be becoming my favorite as I'm sitting here. As far as the overall mood setting ambience of this fragrance, well, let me put it this way. If you have a date night and you want to leave an impression, this will do it. It's unique, memorable, mysterious, strangely addicting. It's gonna seem like to the other person that you know what you're doing, even if you don't. 
All right, my friends, last one, Solar Sands. Now, just based off the name, I have a suspicion what this is going to smell like. There are many fragrances in this category. Yeah, pretty much what I was expecting. Uh, not that that's a bad thing. In fact, there are some very good things about a fragrance like this when it comes to a quote unquote summery scent. It's summery, it's aromatic, but not tropical. And that is what sets this apart in fragrances like this, apart from most of your other fruity tropical summer scents, which is also ironically what makes it a good candidate for a year round scent. So is it a versatile scent? I would say absolutely. It reminds me a lot of the versatility of something like a Santal and Coconut, also from Candle Science or Candle Science's Black Violet and Saffron. Great scents, very versatile. There's something there for everyone and they can all reach into different seasons of the year. It has a bit of citrus on the light side and it has some other kind of sensory, summery fragrances as well, like palm. But it also has some of those warm, soothing notes as well, which is coming from the coconut milk and the amber. And then of course it does have some of your earthy, woody notes as well, like your teak wood, sea salt, and musk. So are the notes in this fragrance balanced? I would say yes. There's nothing extremely overpowering from one particular note. Every once in a while, it does remind me of some kind of sunscreen or, or a sun lotion, sort of like that whole laying on the beach vibe, but when has that ever been a bad thing? Personally, I appreciate a good summery scent option that isn't just tropical and fruity and one that can be used all year long. So what makes a good year round fragrance? Well, first of all, it's about versatility. You want a fragrance that can work at any time in any season, just like that friend that always knows the right thing to say at any given time. Secondly, balanced notes are key. You don't want one particular note to be overpowering or too wimpy. However, it's also about personal preference. What works for one person might not work for another, like pineapple on pizza. All right, if you are interested, check out one of these next two videos. You know you want to. And if you enjoyed this video and like to see more content, please subscribe below. Give this video a thumbs up. It would mean a lot. And I'll see you all next time.